In this video, we're going to continue our discussion around how to design uh, steel members uh, when they are subjected to tension forces. And so previously, we've looked at how to determine the gross area and net area. And when we were looking at the uh, net section capacity, so this would be when we're trying to determine if the um, member which we're designing is going to fail at the net section uh, due to rupture, um, there was this sort of KTE factor uh, which had came up, and I had mentioned that it was due to shear lag. So I figured we'd talk briefly about what is shear lag and um, how do we account for it when we're doing a design. So shear lag is really occurs when we've got a member which is loaded in tension, uh, but not all of it is connected uh, into you know where you're you're pulling it from. And so with sort of words, it's kind of hard to uh, visualize. So I've drawn you a little picture. And so what we have here is this angle section, uh, its intention. And, you know, the first thing that you note is that, you know, the only the bottom leg is connected through uh, the top isn't. And so as we're pulling on it, not the entire uh, section is pulled. And so what that means is, uh, well, you know, as we get further and further out, uh, we'll have uniform stress across the uh, section, but you know, as we get to that connection, all of that stress has to somehow get into this connection because these two forces have to be in equilibrium. And so what that means is you'll have a portion which is unstressed and essentially not getting used. And so uh, we can't actually count on that for um, our ability to you know resist this tension load. Um, and an additional thing, if we look at sort of a side view, uh, what we note is that, uh, well, there's going to be some eccentricity as well between where, you know, say, um, as we get sort of towards away from the connection, um, the tension force is going to be acting at the centroid of the member, and here the tension force is going to be acting at the centroid of this connection. So you have some eccentricity here, and so you have kind of this inefficient joint, and this is why, um, you know, it's kind of a, a difficult thing to design. And in fact, you know, if we're looking at the math of this, it's really complicated. Um, and, you know, that's, and, you know, as designers, um, we don't want to spend time doing complicated analysis if ultimately it doesn't make any difference. And if we can come up with an approximation, which gives us a good conservative design and a robust uh, design for the loads it's going to see. And so, you know, that's what we do is uh, when we go through the design, we... Uh, effectively um, sort of say that, well, you know, this portion really isn't getting used, uh, so what we're going to do is just pretend that it's not there, and we're going to reduce down our net area by some factor, KTE. And this KTE is called this joint efficiency factor, uh, so part of that is just due to the amount of area which is um, stressed or unstressed, and part of it is also to do uh, with this eccentricity. And, uh, and what you'll note in sort of this description is we're only doing this when we're looking at rupture of the net area. And that's because as we get further and further away from the connection, our stress is even out to sort of a more uniform distribution. And that means that we can actually just use the uh, gross section of that element. So that's a sort of overview as to, you know, what shear lag is and why we use it. Uh, let's just run through a quick example and, and really how this KTE factor gets used when we're doing a, uh, a design or, or, or some analysis of a member intention. And so I've got a design example for you here. Uh, it's really just a simple angle. So it's an unequal angle, so a UA uh, that's 75 by 50 by 5. So 5 is the thickness. Um, and it's connected through the short leg. So, you know, that distance would be 50 and that distance would be 75. Um, I've given you some material properties, so it's got a yield stress of 320 megapascals, it has an ultimate stress of 440, and it has a gross area of 560 millimeters squared. And so let's find, and then, you know, I've got it sort of welded to this plate here, that's what this uh, hatch is denoting. So let's just go through and look at what the um, section capacity is. And of course, recall that when we're doing our tension design or tension uh, analysis, 
we look at the uh, what's going to be the minimum uh, capacity from one of two of failure modes. First is yielding of the gross section, and second is rupture of the net section. So uh, our first section sort of criteria, we have yielding of the gross section. And so that would be phi ends of t equals phi ag times fy. Um, phi is going to equal 0 0.9 for when we're in tension. Ag is just 560 millimeters squared. And fy is 320. MPA and we'll divide by a thousand newtons per kilonewton and so we end up with phi ends of T equals 161 kilonewtons all right and so that should look very familiar to uh, the examples which we've done looking just at flat plates because it's, it's ultimately the same we just get a uh, a gross area multiply it by its yield stress and that's the we have a, an area times a stress we get a force that's our tension uh, capacity um, now looking at our sort of second criteria which is going to be the uh, rupture of the net area And this is where we're actually going to use this KTE factor to uh, account for the fact that, you know, not all of this section is actually uh, being engaged. And so we're going to reduce down our net area, and that's because this is where we're worried about uh, tearing out uh, at this portion. Because we're, you know, we're really overloading uh, that section compared to what we are further out away from this eccentric connection. So, we get phi ends of t is going to be a phi times 0 0.85 uh, times our net area times k t of e uh, times our ultimate stress. So here uh, the net area because we have no holes uh, in there uh, for this case which is this welded connection our um, net area is going to equal our gross area and that's of course going to be 560 millimeters squared as it was up above now when we want to look at this KTE factor uh, we actually go into the steel standard and let's just kick over to that uh, now and it's in this table 7.3.2 and what it has is a series of different sort of connection cases um, for, you know, and then what the appropriate KTE factor is there. So you've got an angle connected either uh, with equal length legs or unequal legs. You have a channel uh, connected to a plate, a T-section. And what you'll notice with these cases as we go further down, if we have a symmetric section, the KTE factor equals 1. And that's because even though... Uh, we have some shear lag, we don't have any eccentricity there, and so because those forces are going to all line up uh, at the centroid of the plate, uh, we can effectively account for those forces to be uh, identical. Um, and so, as I said, this KTE factor is a combination, uh, really, of both uh, the shear lag effect as well as this eccentricity. Now, so going back to the... Um, uh, you know, chart here, uh, we have an unequal angle, uh, so, and we're connected through the short leg, so we have a KTE factor of uh, 0 0.75. So let's just come back uh, to our page. So we have uh, KTE equals 0 0.75, and that's from NZS. 
table 7.3.2, just you know, putting our reference down here. And so um, let's just plug all of this into our equation. And we will get uh, phi ends of t equals 0 0.9 times 0 0.85 times 560 millimeters squared times 0 0.75 for KTE and times 440 megapascals. So let's just uh, quickly work out what that um, capacity is times 0 0.75 times 440, just plugging it in uh, here, and we'll divide by uh, 1,000. And we get phi ends of t equals 141 kilonewtons. Um, now we look at the two. Well, 141 is smaller than 161, and that is going to be um, our governing capacity. So hopefully um, that seems fairly straightforward. Um, really, it's this sort of, yeah, as I said, shear lag and uh, eccentricity of joints uh, where this KTE factor is coming from. And it's really quite simple to just look it up um, in the steel standard for these different cases. And um, with that, just then plug it into your normal section capacities. So with that, thanks for watching.